Hey guys, how y'all doing? Hope y'all had a good spring break. Um, I hope you're also healthy and do not have coronavirus. Um, this is the best I think I can do right now, uh, but I want to try to get you the lectures. I wanted you to get you your information so we can start prepping for the AP test. Last time I heard, they're not going to delay the AP test, and if they do, it's only going to be for a week. So we have to get as much stuff as we can get done now so we're not overwhelmed and behind when we get back okay uh through the next couple of videos we are going to be finishing the french revolution and we will also be discussing the haitian revolution and uh revolutions for independence in latin and central america okay all right now second and third period you probably heard some of this stuff before which is okay just jump in when you're like oh i haven't heard this Fifth and sixth period, let's start about right here. Let me give you a small recap with the French Revolution, okay? The last time we all talked, I do believe that we talked about they dissolved the constitutional monarchy, pronouns, pal, they being the legislative assembly. They say, we don't want the constitutional monarchy anymore. They blow it up and they create the national convention in order to decide what kind of government they want. Now, most of the people in the National Convention were part of the Jacobins, and they were very Republican-minded. They wanted a republic. So it is no surprise that when they do first meet in the National Convention, they shout republic, republic, republic. They vote on it, and they do get a republic. Remember, the second issue they had to deal with is, what are they going to do with Louis? Okay, you can't have him running around. Okay? He is obviously a cause for a lot of derision and division in France. So when it's all said and done, in early 1793, they convict him of treason, and then they behead him through the guillotine. Okay? Now, with that being said, there is definitely an attack by the National Convention on the monarchy, um, on, on the rich, okay? But definitely they're going to go after the church, okay? Now, we've talked about this. Remember, there was a lot of corruption in the Catholic Church at this time. And that's why they went after a lot of people in the First Estate. They confiscated all the church lands, okay? And the corruption was not good, but people, they like being Catholic. They, you know, their religion is important to them. And when you mess with people's religion, like we have seen many times throughout the world, throughout history, religion is always going to be a source of war if you try to mess with somebody's religion. Okay. Now, in terms of messing with the religion, there's a couple things that the National Convention that is striving towards the Republic, what they do in terms of Christianity. Okay. First thing, they try to put both Catholicism and Protestantism under state control. Now, look, if you take Euro, we can go more into how they actually do that. But they wanted to control who was serving in the Catholic Church. They wanted to control who was going to be the bishops in their area. And, of course, they would get paid by the state. So, really, there would be no independence of the church. It would be totally subservient to the French government. That's the first thing, okay? Second thing, they erased all names that had to do with saints from street signs or cities, which if you even look at a map today of France, a lot of the cities are named after local saints, and definitely a lot of the street names are named after saints, okay? So they go after them that way. Probably most famously is that they create a whole new calendar. Now, guys, I'm telling you right now, pay attention to what I'm about to say, because the next DBQ we do is going to be over the revolutionary calendar in France, okay? So with the calendar, the French government really saw this as a throwback to the past, a past they did not like. They said the calendar, all of the days we have off, has to do with Christianity, probably specifically Catholicism. They said, look, we don't want that. We want to get rid of it. Catholicism is a superstition. Why are you believing about some man in the clouds? We need to believe in science. Even the days of the week, that's connected to North, Mytho North, <laughs> North mythology, which has nothing to do with France. 
and the months of the year were named after Roman deities or, or Roman rulers, which had nothing to do with France. Okay, so with that being said, they're like, no, no, we need to get rid of this. So the first thing they do is they get rid of the Gregorian calendar. Now, the Gregorian calendar is the calendar that we're used to seeing. Seven days a week, 12 months a year, 365 days. Now, with the Gregorian calendar, they get rid of that and they create the revolutionary calendar. Okay? Now, with the revolutionary calendar, you have 10 days a week, 3 weeks a year, 12 months a year. Okay, let me rephrase that because I don't know if I said that right, okay? You have 10 days a week, three weeks a month, 12 months a year, okay? Now, that doesn't equal 365 days. It equals 360, if you do the math. And the last five days, they would have big celebrations over the revolution and the ideals of the revolution, okay? Now, let's come back to the week, you would have nine days off, or I'm sorry, you'd work for nine days, and you'd have one day off. They would eliminate all the, the celebration days and the feast days that had to do with a you know, certain saint, or you know, they would eliminate Christmas because it, it had a Christian influence, or they would eliminate Easter because it had a Christian influence. And they would replace it with, with days off that had to do with the Republic. They would replace it with days that would celebrate leaders of the revolution. Okay? Now, in one sense, they're trying to get away from Christianity. They're also trying to get away from older customs that didn't make sense to this new Republic. Also, if you're smart, you're realizing that now you're working every 10 days and getting one off day as opposed to working seven days and getting one off day. All right, so yes, people have less off days, and in theory, are they, they're going to have a lot more productivity. Now, overwhelmingly, everybody kind of disagreed with this calendar. Nobody liked the calendar. However, that doesn't matter because the people in charge, you know, the National Convention, the Republicans, they wanted it. So they would force, like, the newspapers to make sure that they printed the revolutionary date. Which started, which started when they declared the republic. Okay. Now, eventually, this falls out of favor. Nobody really likes it. And it's going to be Napoleon that actually brings back the Gregorian calendar. Okay. Now, that being said, um, opposition to the Jacobins, opposition to the radical elements of the National Convention, is going to come from a lot of different elements of society. Okay, obviously the, the, the old first estate and the old second estate, you know, the people that were connected to the Catholic Church or the upper clergy, they did not like them, and rightfully so, they could probably be killed by them. Also, the second estate, the nobility, a lot of times did not like them, all right, because they were also in fear. And plus, they wanted to go back to the way it used to be when they were in power and the king was in power, okay? Um, even some people on what we call the, uh, the left... Even some of the other Republicans were worried about what the Jacobins were doing because they were just taking property. And they're taking everybody's property. Now, eventually, if you're just sitting around and you see them take everybody's property, how long is it before they come after your property? So a lot of people were really upset with, with the Jacobins just taking of property. Okay? This is the big one. In retaliation for the execution of Louis the 16th, now France is at war with Austria and Prussia, which is not good because they have internal problems in France. Now they also have external problems dealing with Prussia and Austria as well. Okay. Now, remember, just because you've tried to create this new government doesn't mean your problems go away. And, and Maximilian Robespierre, the committee of, uh, I'm sorry, Maximilian Robespierre, the Jacobins, the National Convention, they're going to have to deal with this. However, they haven't quite fully created their republic yet. So, in order to deal with the turmoil, write this down, both internal and external, what they decide to do, and this is Maximilian Robespierre, they're going to create the Committee of Public Safety, all right? Now, with the Committee of Public Safety, <laughs> it's, it's a very small committee, 
and they're not really dealing with public safety. The Committee of Public Safety was assured or was created to make sure that the hopes of the Republic stay alive, that Maximilian Robespierre stays in power, and that the Jacobins will remain in power as well. Okay, so with the Committee of Public Safety, okay, it is essentially a, a small group of people and they have dictatorial powers over France. They, there's no illusion right now of a republic. They're saying they're doing this in the name of the republic, okay? Which, that can be very dangerous too, okay? Now, with the Committee of Public Safety, Robespierre comes out right off the bat and says, look, if we want to keep this revolution alive, we are going to have to sacrifice some liberty. You are going to have to sacrifice some freedoms, okay? If you want this thing to remain alive. If you, if, if, if you don't, well, we'll just go back to the old regime and we'll let this thing die, okay? Now, the problem is, is that Robespierre is trying to find enemies of the Republic, but a lot of times he's just finding enemies to himself. And that can be a wide range of people. I mean, definitely it would be people who are pro-monarchists, who are nobles, who openly challenge Robespierre, but maybe sometimes it's people that are siding with Robespierre that he sees as a threat to his power. Anybody could be captured. Anybody could be ensnared by the reign of terror. Okay. Now, during this time with the Committee of Public Safety, they go around and they essentially are rounding up people they think are dangerous to the Republic. Now, of course, when I'm saying round it up, it's not like they're just putting them in a pin and say, hey, well, you know, eventually we'll deal with you. No, they're executing them. Okay. Now, this roughly 18 month period is known as the reign of terror. And, you know, we don't really have the the exact number of people who are killed here, but upwards of 40,000 people, it could be double that, are executed in the name of the Republic, which is a heck of a lot of people. Okay. Now, I don't think any, any historian or anybody would tell you, hey, 40,000 people dying, nah, no big deal, all right? No, that's kind of a big deal, all right? And that's not a good thing. However, they are going to have more success dealing with Prussia and Austria, okay? With the Committee of Public Safety, they will use mass conscription. Now, in case you don't know what the word conscription is, conscription is forced military service, now, when they use mass conscription for the military service, this creates a whole new thing in history, okay? First of all, the French army will be known as the nation in arms. Now, you have to understand, this nation in arms is going to build to 1.3 million people. That's a lot of people. That is by far the biggest army in France, and that is by far the, the biggest army really in European history up to this point, okay? Nobody has seen an army of 1.3 million because it's all the people in France fighting. Now, they're not fighting for Louis. They're not fighting for a king. What they're fighting for is France. They're fighting for their way of life, for their customs, okay? Now, this is planting to seeds to, to what we know as nationalism, okay? which is very different. Now, of course, when you have 1.3 million people, eventually you're going to you're going to be successful in war. It's just the numbers game. Okay? Now, in the following video, I am going to talk about the um the outcomes of this war and the rise of Napoleon.